Well, we have a great arts community in Newport County, that's for sure. And it's certainly enhanced by the Jamestown Arts Center. And there's a really cool exhibition happening right now. You can learn even more about it by visiting NewportThisWeek.com and just look for the art scene report that covers this in great detail. Aaron McCutcheon is a professor of art and art history, I believe, at the University of Rhode Island and joins us to describe this awesome exhibition that includes some of your students. Thanks for the time this morning. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for having me here. So, so, oh, oh, pardon me, please. Yeah, I think you were about to explain in detail. Yeah, right? I'm happy to get into it. <laughs> so, um, as you said, I'm a, a, a professor of art history at URI, and um, I teach a course on museum studies. And a part of this course is uh, to have a group, a small group of 10 students, so these advanced art history and studio art majors at the University of Rhode Island, um, get together to plan an exhibition. So the whole course, they're basically from top to bottom, um, uh, coming up with a thematic concept, putting out a call for works, going through all of these artists that have submitted works to the show, um, and then bringing the exhibition to life, which is what's on view right now at the Jamestown Arts Center. Um, and so the show includes 27 artists from a lot of local artists, but also artists from different parts of the country that are all responding to this theme that my students came up with um, called Second Time Around. Mm. And so it's all these different kinds of works that are engaging with that concept that they put together, um, sort of in dialogue with the Jamestown Art Center um, as well to sort of figure this all out. Well, it's a really cool partnership and it, it makes a lot of sense. It's, a, it's also a great opportunity for the students, that's for sure. Um, a lot of mixed media stuff as I look through some of the work that's that's available for perusal at NewportThisWeek.com. Um, what was sort of the beyond just the call to action? What sort of expectations or or media did you expect the students to kind of work in? And were you surprised by anything that came out of this? Yeah, we were. So the the whole call sort of evolved from the students really being interested in the a lot of different issues, but um, issues regarding climate change. I'm finding in general that that's a lot of what, you know, we all should be concerned about, but especially young students um, are really concerned about um, engaging with and thinking about how art can sort of respond to those things. So there was this aspect of sustainability that we really wanted to capture, but then also I'm an art historian. A lot of these students are, are historians. Um, so they're really interested in histories as well. So the call was sort of trying to combine those things of, you know, taking at its concept, at its core, this idea of this ritual practice that we do every year of like cleaning out our closets, you know, something that's every day. Um, or, or every year, something that we do, donating objects, donating clothing, you know, to be reused, that's like an everyday act of sustainability. But then also thinking about how all that stuff that we accumulate has a lot of meaning for us and sort of carries our histories with us. So they really beautifully found a way of kind of combining those things together um, to put out this call. Now we were, we had no idea what kind of works we were gonna get. And we really expected to have a lot of sort of like assemblage sort of works, you know, a lot of sculptural objects, which we did get some really amazing submissions of those, but we were really surprised at the different ways that artists were taking this topic. So um, there's some artists in the show that are dealing with not just, uh, that, that are recreating practices and processes, um, referencing you know historical practices of memorialization. I'm thinking of one of the works that's mentioned in the article by Victor Anchetta, who's an artist from um, Houston, um, thinking about his Filipino heritage and some of those mourning traditions to sort of deal with um, a personal trauma in his life and create this really beautiful piece that you can kind of walk into um, inside of the exhibition. That's just one example. Um, thinking about how clothing carries like these family histories and recreating clothing, but using used textiles to recreate those kinds of things. Um, and then we also have photography, you know, in the show, which we really weren't necessarily expecting to get. Um, we were sort of expecting more a lot of textiles, which is represented really well in the exhibition. Um, but even the ways that the artists are engaging with textiles, there's a lot of variety um, that you'll see, you know, if you get a chance to go and see it. Um, and really colorful. We love that it was just so, it's sort of like an explosion of color when you go inside. Yeah, it definitely, just from some of the images that were made available, it's super colorful. What's your background in art? Yeah, so I, um, I'm, as I said, I'm an art historian. Um, I, uh, my specialization is in Latin American art history, but really specifically in um, the history of Mexican women artists. 
Um, and so that's where I kind of come at this from. And I was delighted to see that a lot of the artists that we had in the show were um, representative of people of different heritages around the United States. Um, so a lot of Latinx artists and their representation. Um, and then also a lot of women artists are included in the show. Um, but that's my focus um, mm. in my own kind of research. Really cool. It's, you know, URI is definitely when you, when you think about art schools in Rhode Island, you're certainly going to think about RISD, of course. And mm -hmm. you'd actually be surprised, though. And as a URI grad myself, both. Oh, great. Within, yeah, exactly. <laughs> both within the context of formal programming and formal opportunities from from a course of study standpoint, but also there's a really robust and thriving South County arts community. We're moving off of Aquidneck Island here a little bit, but <laughs> the, but South County is um, it, it has a real great arts community, whether you're talking about, um, you know, not just the Wickford Art Fair, but the, there are a lot of working artists that live in South County, just like in Newport County as well. Less so because of Airbnb and the pressures of housing yeah. that are driving so many artists out of Newport County. South County is not too far behind. But from your experience as a professor at URI, what sort of interactivity has there been between what some might call the South County art scene and the university. And do you think there's room for more opportunities like the one that we see at the Jamestown Arts Center where this sort of fusion of space and people is happening organically? Definitely. Um, so I will preface this with I'm fairly new to uh, Rhode Island. I just started at the University of Rhode Island two years ago. So this is my second year um, that I'm kind of finishing up here. But I've just been so impressed with the level of deep knowledge that anybody that I meet in Rhode Island has of this like expansive community of artists that are here that are not just in Providence. You kind of just think of Providence, like you said, RISD, um, which is and we have some artists who are, you know, RISD grads, we have Brown professors that are inside in this show, included in the show as well. Um, but this expansive knowledge of all of the stuff that's going on in South County. So from my, you know, experience of being at the University of Rhode Island, I know that all of our arts professors are practicing studio artists that have like deep roots with a lot of the collectives that are, you know, they're, they're during shows. Um, they're including their work in shows. We work a lot with Hera Gallery. Um, they host our, our, our own student um, senior shows for our graduating majors. We have a show up um, that was just up there uh, of our majors now. Um, and this opportunity at the Jamestown Art Center, um, you know, one of our former professors, the reason that this kind of came about, um, Bob Dilworth, who's a wonderful artist um, in a local artist here Rhode Island, uh, put me in touch with the Jamestown Art Center and they had this spot available. And so it's been this wonderful way for me to get to know the space that we're hoping will be an opportunity that happens again. This isn't just sort of a one-off thing, but maybe in a, number, a few years, we could kind of do this again as a way of bridging across that bridge, you know, from the University of Rhode Island over to Jamestown, maybe over to Newport as well. Um, but I do think that we're in a time of opportunity. Um, I myself feel like I'm a very collaborative person and I, I know now from, from being with the folks of the Jamestown, they're so collaborative. They were so um, willing to get the students, let the students get their hands dirty, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. So as a kind of newcomer to Rhode Island, it was a really wonderful experience to just see how open everybody is. Um, and I love the, um, you know, the, the lack of airs that people are putting on in this world that can seem very impenetrable. The art world can seem very sort of exclusionary, you know, but everybody that I've been around and I love, that's what I love about South County is that we're doing this really deep intellectual, interesting work, but in a way that's super accessible for people to participate in. So I just see um, a lot of new things that can happen on the horizon. The URI, um, the University of Rhode Island is opening a new, we have our new fine arts center that's going to be opening in the next, hopefully year and a half, I'd say. Yeah. Um, and so I hope that there's just more opportunities for like cross collaborations in that regard too. Yeah. I think when voters considered the bond that included that piece of infrastructure, that something that at least the informed voter or the thoughtful person considered was more opportunity for fusion between the university and the fine arts coming out of the university and the mm -hmm. communities and in injecting some of that community energy back into the university. It seems like a natural fit that should be explored a lot more. You've done an mm -hmm. amazing job with this project in and of itself. Um, last, last question is how long is this exhibition being shown for? 
Yeah, so it's up till June 15th. And I'll also just include a plug that this Saturday, we have an event that's a collaborative art making event. Um, two of the artists in the show are going to be uh, on hand at the Jamestown Art Center leading folks with activating works that are in the exhibition. Um, and then also creating work that will be on display um, through the run of the exhibition. And that's free, open to all ages. Kids are welcome from 11 to 2 on Saturday. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.